everyone. Thanks for joining Game Trade Media at Alliance Open House. I'm Gretchen, and I'm here with Tom from Looney Labs. Thanks so much for having me, Gretchen. I'm excited to show off some of our new games from this year. We've got a couple of our favorites from earlier in the year over here, uh, but mostly we're going to be talking today about Chrono Trek and a couple new Flux games that we put out. So Chrono Trek is based on our original time travel game Chrononauts, if you're familiar with it, but it's all set in the Star Trek universe. Every single movie and TV show, anytime they've had any time travel shenanigans, Andy has painstakingly watched all of it and put <laughs> almost everything into this game. Anything that he could find a way to reference, he did. So right here, we've got our timeline. This is everything that's... Uh, happened uh, importantly in the Star Trek universe. So there's a lot of different stuff happening uh, on here. The cool thing is you're going to be getting to change history uh, hmm. and alternate Star Trek history. You're going to start by getting uh, a character card, which is going to show you what your timeline is going to look like when you play. So if you're playing as Mr. Spock, you're going to have some normal events like the Doomsday Machine being destroyed and some alternate events. That's what this little sort of apostrophe says. So on his, it's 2063B. So if we look on our timeline, this is all set up in order. It shows you where uh, your events happen when you set it up, but it also has a year. So if we go to 2063, that's Originally, Earth's first contact with Vulcans, but Mr. Spock wants it to be the alternate side. So when you, f when you change history, you actually flip over these cards, and that's when you start entering some of that uh, time travel shenanigans that I mentioned. <laughs> so we've seen a lot of alternate histories mm -hmm. in the movies and TV shows, and this lets you explore all of them. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff packed into this. So we're not going to have time to play through a whole game, but I'm going to show you a little bit of what goes on in here. All right. I'm ready. Yeah. So like I said, your goals are on your character card. There's actually different levels of uh, goals. They have a pip at the top that sort of shows their rank. So the more pips, the more difficult they get. So most of these easy guys just have one normal event, one alternate event, and a green item, which are different cards in the game that you're going to collect. They're sort of like keepers in our other games. They're green just like that. So it's sort of an item that you'll collect from time in order to meet your goal. And you'll have to change history according to your specific thing. But some of the, uh, some of the more complex characters might need many items or they might need fractures. Fractures are something else from Chrononauts. That's basically when things go really, really bad in time and it's messed up beyond repair. Uh, suffice it to say that they're very bad and you don't want that to happen unless it's part of your goal. Uh, but in order to change those uh, time periods in the game, you're going to use another type of card called Inverters. These are really fun. They all do the same thing. They let you change one of these over to an alternate side. And when you pick uh, a ripple point, it's going to tell you what is going to be affected by it at the bottom. These symbols help you determine which cards are going to be affected when you flip a ripple point. So just like we've seen in all these you know, episodes, when you change one thing in time, it affects a lot of oh, different man. things. Yes, it's, it's a lot of fun. The inverters are all different ways that you can travel time. Here, take a look through those. Each one of those is a different way that the cast and crew have traveled through time from you know, wormholes to you know, special time missions. And they all do the same thing, but each one of them has a special reference that's a lot of fun. And that's the, the long and short of it. There are other cards. There's a bunch of action cards that are going to let you do all kinds of different things. And there are power actions, which are just super cool actions that have a little bit more restriction on them. But there's all sorts of nonsense that can happen in here. A lot of these actions let you look through the draw pile or through the discard as you travel through time and search out specific artifacts or try to change things. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this game that I want to mention is that you can accidentally or maybe on purpose, if you are Q, for example, you want this to happen. But if you are going through the deck, you're going to come across these events. And these are black cards that happen immediately, sort of like Creepers in our other games. And these are things that sort of destroy time. 
Like, if you look at this one, it says Devron Anomaly Expands. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> So what that refers to is the Devron Anomaly. If you start at the end of time, as you draw these events, it's going to expand backwards <laughs> in time and start eating up all sorts of events. And if you get all the way back to the beginning, if you play all of the, the Devron Anomaly Expands cards, then at the very beginning where life begins... If you flip it over, life does not find a way. And this is, yeah, this is one of those futures that Q showed us uh, in an episode. And so if you are Q, your goal is actually to uh, prevent life from finding a way and playing all of these fractures. So that's a really fun uh, way to, to win if you get to be Q. Um, otherwise, this acts as sort of a timer that makes sure that you're not going to go on for too long while you're playing. There's even a card in here that's called Invitation to the Queue. <laughs> so if you play it, you can basically join the queue and win with that even if you're not queue. That's so cool. It's really, really <laughs> fun. It's, it's a great example of some of the weird things that we've seen happen in Star Trek history. And I always like the chaos of it. And it does help to make sure that the game doesn't go on for too long if you're running out of time, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, up next, we're going to talk about some of our latest Flux games. We've got two brand new ones that just came out this summer. I'm super excited about them. And as you can see, they've got a cool new uh, package. They each have a collectible coin that's going to be unique to each game. So this one is got a little Captain America shield that is really cool, the holographic coins are just a fun little extra that's included with these oh that's ha has heft to it too. yeah it's actually like a, a poker chip yeah. and it's pretty nice it's it's a fun collectible that we got to include and it's nice to show off you know in store and on the shelf it's and my turn <laughs> it is used in the game there is a rule that says uh pass the coin and when you put that new rule into play you have to remember to pass the coin on to the next person when your turn is over otherwise then uh, that person gets to draw a card. So uh -huh. it's, it's a nice little bonus. You want to make sure that you are keeping track of whose turn it is. It's also useful anytime you seem to keep track of turns. So Marvel Flux is an absolute blast. It's got all of your favorite the heroes and some villains in there from the movies. And I saw it even had uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Yes. <laughs> Into the Spider-Verse was absolutely amazing. Miles Morales is uh, one of the exclusives. If you get the specialty edition in your hobby game store, then it comes with seven exclusive cards. And that That's includes... awesome. It's so cool. It includes Miles Morales mm -hmm. uh, and Nick Fury and <laughs> uh, Agent Coulson in the uh, exclusive ones and then a bunch of goals that use them as well. Spider-Gwen is also in the game uh, and there are some really fun sort of Spider-Verse themed goals oh. in there. Yeah, we all yes. went to go see Spider-Verse uh, <laughs> when it came out and it was, I mean, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I knew it was going to be good, but it blew me away. Oh, I it was, it. It was by I love far, it so much. To see that so in the good. game makes me be like, yeah, yes. I know, I, I, I fought adamantly to make sure that that was in the game. I was like, Miles has got to be in there and we've got to do some cool stuff with it because he's such a fan favorite and, and one of my favorites. So uh, Jumanji Flux oh. is... Yeah. That's nostalgia. That's like a throwback right there. I know. What's really cool about this is that it has stuff from the, the older movie, the newer movie, and the original storybook <gasps> that the Jumanji movies were all based on. That's so cool. Yeah, I know. I had never actually read the book before. and yeah, I, got I didn't to know it was based on a book. It's based on a, on a children's book that has uh, a lot of things that you're familiar with and some things that uh, I didn't know happened in there. Uh, that's so cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about some of the stuff that's in the, the storybook. First, I have to tell you about the new card type that's in here. Yes. Uh, if you've played Flux before, you know each new Flux has some cool new stuff in it, some new keepers and combinations, and usually some cool actions that let you do different stuff. Well, Jumanji Flux has a brand new mechanic, something we've never done in a Flux game before. Rhinoceros is coming straight into your living room. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, in order to represent how dangerous the world of Jumanji is, we added a brand new type of card called Danger Cards. And these Danger Cards are basically uh, actions that help you uh, eliminate someone from the game. <laughs> so, I, of course, I drew lions and not rhinoceros, like you said. But there's one of those in here where whoever has that keeper in play will get eliminated from the game. Oh no. <laughs> I know, it definitely feels dangerous. It keeps me on the edge of my seat every time I play the game. 
Uh, and what's fun about this is Flux always is good for letting people jump in and out of the game. Mm -hmm. You can always just deal three new cards to someone and let them join the game. So with the eliminations, not only do you have a new way to win, if you eliminate everyone mm -hmm. else from the game, then you're the last one standing <laughs> and you're king of Jumanji. You do actually have to say, and this is in the rules, you have to say Jumanji when you either match the goal or you eliminate everyone else in order I to win. I love that. It's great. It's, <laughs> it's a really fun way. I've caught people off guard with that before because you can sort of, you know, snatch a, a victory from them if they're too excited to win and they don't follow the rules, then they don't win. So, oh. mm -hmm. But you can uh, jump back in if you get eliminated. You have to skip at least one turn and then, you know, get a new hand and come back in basically as a new player. Um, but if you get to the bottom of the deck, there is a brand new meta rule that says... No more extra lives. And, of course, I didn't put it on the bottom of the deck. But once you run through the whole deck, this rule comes into play. And it says, once you're eliminated, you can't jump back in. Oh, no. Yeah. It's another fun way to make sure that the game doesn't go on forever. Um, if you've done some really crazy Flux stuff, like mixed a bunch of Flux decks together, you've maybe had a game like that where it's gone on just really, really long, which I love. I, I like the chaos of it. But with this, it makes sure that everybody has a chance to uh, play. Even if they get eliminated, they can jump back in. But eventually, someone's going to have to win. I, yeah, it's I really absolutely, cool. When you walked in with this, I was like, yes, Jumanji, more ways to play. Oh, oh. it's right here on top. Here you go. Oh, no you more, go. <laughs> no more extra lives. <laughs> This says that you only get to jump back in the game if you are still going through the deck. Once you get to the bottom of the deck, you will have to stay out of the game if you get eliminated. So it makes it a little bit more competitive. And I'll tell you, the, the danger cards change the way you play this game. Heightens. It ups the ante. It really makes it feel dangerous. I personally, when I play, I always try to get as many keepers as I can, sort of stockpile them up and <laughs> make sure that I have as many chances to win as possible. But that's really, really dangerous <laughs> when someone can play a card like this at any time. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have everything out on the table because that makes me way more of a target. So it's, it's something really new, even if you're really familiar with Flux. <laughs> it will change the way you play this game. So if anyone wanted to get more information of any of these games, mm -hmm. uh, where could they go? Uh, LoonyLabs.com has everything you need to know about all the games. It can help you figure out where you can get them. Uh, we have a store locator also, so if you want to support your friendly local gaming store, you can check that out and pick up all of these games. They're all available in stores now. If you don't find them in your store, ask them, and I bet they can order it for you. And, of course, you can get it on our website as well. Well, thank you once more for showing us all of these new different versions of Flux. They were awesome and we will see you at your friendly local game store.